Jira time tracking. You either love it or you avoid it like the plague. But if your team is struggling with logging time, tracking hours, or figuring out where all those hours went, I got you. Let's break down Jira time tracking, how to use it, how to set it up, use it properly, and actually get useful data from it. And stick around till the end, I have a simple way of making time tracking way easier. So the first thing we're gonna need is to make sure your time tracking is enabled and all of your users have access to it. So there's two things that we need to do. Number one is check permissions, and number two is to make sure that the fields are available on the projects and the work items for the users to actually fill out. So let's check on permissions first. So I'll go to settings on the top right, go to work items, and in here I'll scroll down all the way on the left side till I find time tracking. When I'm in here, by default you should have your Jira provided time tracking and your information here for working hours per day, working days per week, etc. You can change this information if you'd like, but for most teams the out of box information should work. And there's a little note here at the bottom that says if you want your team to log time, make sure that they have the work on work items uh, with the relevant projects and permission schemes. So instead of going into these permission schemes where you're going to get buried and you're not going to find what you're looking for, I like to just go to the project directly. So I'll go to ITS and in here I'll click on project settings on the bottom left. I'll click the access drop down and then go to project permissions. So in here I like to just hit command F and then type in what I'm looking for. So I'll type in time and that brings us right down to time tracking permissions. Okay, and here we are on our time tracking, and here are all the permissions. Delete all work logs, delete own work logs, edit all work logs, edit own work logs, and work on issues. So depending on how you want to structure this, you could give the admins of the project abilities to delete and edit all work logs. That way they could go in and manage on behalf of other users in case changes need to be made. Or you could also just disable them entirely and have them be unavailable. Here's what I would suggest. I'll start from the bottom here since those are going to be the most common that you're going to want to assign. Work on issues or soon to be work items. You're going to want to make sure that everybody has access to this. This is actually going to give them the ability to track the time. So if I look on the right side, this is assigned to admins and service desk team. Edit own work log. This is good to have available for everyone as well in case somebody makes a mistake or needs to go back and edit some hours that they didn't quite complete correctly. Again, this is assigned to administrators and all service desk team members. Edit all work logs. This is one that I would restrict to only admins or maybe not even project admins, but just some super admins inside of the organization. Otherwise, you'll have people just jumping in and changing work logs on behalf of other users. Delete own work log. This is also one I recommend having for your users. That way they could delete work logs and recreate them if they ever need to. And then delete all work logs. Same thing as edit all work logs. I would tend to not allow this for everyone maybe the project admins or maybe even just global admins inside of the Jira environment. So to add or remove these, all you have to do is scroll to the top and click on actions, edit permissions. And then when you're actually editing the permissions, I'll find the time tracking once more. In here, you could update or remove the users or project roles associated with these items. So let's say I wanted the ability to edit all work logs to go to all service desk team members. I'll click on update and then I'll click on project role and I'll find the project role that I want to associate this with. So service desk team, update, and now if we take a look here, we have that role added to our permission. So we have the permissions assigned. The last thing we need to do here is to make sure that the fields are actually available for our users when they need to fill them out. Inside of any ticket, I'll scroll all the way down to the bottom right and hit configure. This is the section where we can modify and change all of our fields within our tickets. We're gonna to need to pull in a few key fields here for this to work. So I'll go to the fields on the top right and search for time. And I'm gonna be looking under the system fields. You don't wanna be searching under other or the date or time fields. You wanna have the system fields located here at the bottom. These are the ones that we're gonna be pulling in. And if they're not showing up in this list, they may already be on the ticket. So you may wanna scroll through and see if they're located anywhere in this list. So this is gonna be your screen to configure and edit all of your fields within this ticket. So I'm gonna to need to make sure that two fields are pulled in here for our time tracking. The first field is gonna be called time tracking. So I'll go ahead and just search for time here. And I wanna make sure that I pull in the correct field here. I don't want anything that's a date or time field or an other field. I want a system field and it has to specifically have this icon here. So I'll pull in the time tracking and I'll throw that in right under reporter. The second field is optional, but I do like to have this and I'll explain why a little bit later. And this field is going to be called original estimate. And once again, make sure you're pulling in the correct field here with this icon. So I'll pull that in right below time tracking and click save. Back in my project here, I could see that the time tracking and original estimate fields are now located on the right side. So how is time tracking actually done in Jira? It's pretty simple. All you really have to do is click on the field and there's a little formula here that shows up that tells you exactly how to do it. So if I'm logging in 30 minutes, I type in 30 M and I could add a time remaining as well if I need to. And I could add a little description here if needed. I worked on something 
and I'll click save. Now I've logged 30 minutes and I could go back in and log more time if needed. So if I come back here the next day and maybe I log one hour, uh, then I add more work completed and I click save, I've added more time. And there's a total of one hour and 30 minutes logged at this point. So anyone can jump in here and start logging their time on these ITS tickets or any other work items within JIRA. If you wanna reference who logged the time, when they logged it and what was done, all you have to do is go to the activity panel and click on the work log. And in here, you can see that I logged the time for one hour. It tells me exactly when I logged it and what I added as a comment. So what about this original estimate field? Uh, why is this useful and why do I suggest using it? So at our company, we have a lot of projects that we work on and a lot of tasks that are created for individuals to complete. And sometimes when those tasks are created, we wanna know or we wanna add an estimate of how much time it would take to complete those items. So that's what the original estimate field does. Let me add a value here of two hours, click check. And now the original estimate is set to two hours. And you can see that this little bar here changed from completely blue to partially blue and partially gray. And the reason this happened is because we actually logged one hour and 30 minutes, uh, but the estimate was two hours. So let's say that you have a total amount of time that you want allocated to this ticket or project. You could set that in the original estimate. That way you communicate to your users how much time this should take. Now we'll go ahead and log the last 30 minutes, click save. Now our two hours is logged and we have no more time remaining. So it really is as simple as that to make sure your fields are available, your permissions are set, and for you users to start jumping in and logging time. And oftentimes out of box, this is already available for you and needs no extra configuration. So how do we actually make this data useful? Let's say you have stakeholders, managers, or projects that you're working on, and you wanna break down of the hours by assignee, by the tickets. So unfortunately, out of box, we really don't have many options to do this. We can use a filter to get these results down and show a list of items that have had a work log in them. Uh, but that's really not ideal. We don't know who logged the items, when they logged them, how much total time was logged without actually going into each individual ticket. And the only other alternative is to actually look at this work log and see that information in this ticket. Fortunately, there is a solution that is 100% free. This will require a third-party plugin and it is a dashboard plugin that we're gonna be utilizing as a solution to report on this time tracking. And there are a lot to choose from and there are two that I would highly recommend here. If you're looking for something completely free, the first one I'd suggest is Custom Charts. I use this for pretty much everything. I absolutely love this tool. This is, in my opinion, the best reporting and dashboarding tool in Jira. So I highly recommend using this tool if you can afford it. It is very affordable and it is the one I recommend using. If you don't want to pay and you want a free solution that's going to get you by for the time being, I would suggest this plugin here for reports by Bloom Peak. This is free and it will get the job done even though it is a little bit more limited. Once installed, you could go ahead and create a brand new dashboard and I have a time tracking dashboard in here. I'll go ahead and edit this dashboard. We'll go ahead and find the plugin that we just installed. Reports, charts, and graphs free. I'll add that in here. I'll change the layout just to show this as one big screen. And then in here, what we're gonna do is select a source. This could either be a filter, custom JQL, or a specific project. Let's go ahead and just find the ITS project since that's the one we were just testing on. We could also filter down by when these tickets were created. I'll just say all dates to show me everything in this example. So for the Y axis, I'm gonna hit sum because I want a total number of hours. And then I'm gonna search and find the time spent in hours field. And then on the X axis, maybe I wanna see this broken down by assignee. So I'll go ahead and search for that. Add that in and our report is generating a preview. And there we go. We have a time spent and then broken down by assignee. I'll go ahead and click save and our report is ready. Uh, now you have all of your information in one place. You could potentially filter these results down to only show time tracked in the last month uh, or in the last week. That way you always have all the information on the time tracking. We could also drill into this data more, which can be super helpful. I'll look into Mitch Davis and click on this orange bar. And that'll bring me directly to a filter with all of Mitch Davis's tickets that we have inside of the report. And I could actually start digging into these individually and seeing exactly where the time went. One more thing I wanna mention is Tempo. Tempo is actually one of the most popular plugins within the Jira ecosystem and for good reason. It's pretty much the end all be all for time tracking and reporting. As we went over, the out of box time tracking is great and will get the job done for most teams. But if you're looking for something extremely robust to track time, billing hours, create advanced reports, this is gonna be your end all be all solution. This is not a sponsored video, but I definitely recommend checking them out if your use case is a lot more complex than what Jira provides out of box. So now that you know how to track time in Jira without it being a total mess, check out this video next to see exactly how to set up filters and help apply that to time tracking. If this helped, hit like and subscribe. I drop videos just like this once a week.